Hi, everybody. It's Miss Kim, and it is time for Full Steam Ahead. So today we are going to figure out how to engineer a self-propelled paddle boat. And you will need some kind of milk bottle. I had, we only get half gallon milk at our house, so I've got a half gallon milk jug. You're going to need another bottle. Um, square would be best probably, but you're going to need a bottle that has a cap on it that's not too wide. So a juice, some kind of juice bottle is perfect. You are going to need some chopsticks, and I have some here from our friends at Kama. Thank you. So we've got chopsticks. Pull apart. Oops, just lost my bottle. You're going to need a ruler, something to mark with. I used a marker, um, a Sharpie. I found that when I used a pencil, it didn't mark as well. You're going to need a pretty sturdy rubber band. So you're going to need a um, thick, medium-sized rubber band. Um, you're also going to need some duct tape and scissors, okay? So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to take your milk jug and you are going to use the ruler to measure out a three by two inch rectangle and you will need four of them. Okay, so I just marked my jug. I know you can't see this, but in the interest of time, I'm just going to go ahead and do this. You do want to make sure that it's square. So what I did first originally, because um, I've got some that are already cut out here, is I actually took a piece of paper. So you could, um, once you cut one out, you can use that as your template. Put that on your milk jug and then trace around it. That'll ensure that everything's pretty much the same, okay? And once you have that done four times, I've got one on there, you're going to take your scissors and this might be a, somewhere where your big person comes in. I just made a hole and then I cut out my rectangle. Now, if you have a gallon jug, this will probably be a lot easier to get your rectangles nice and square. But like I said, if you make a pattern first, then you should be good. Okay. So I'm only going to cut, in the interest of time, I'm just going to cut out one from my yellow. Because I have four from a clear or frosted milk jug. Okay. So once you've cut all of those out, you have to fold these and you want to fold them hamburger. Hamburger is the short side Okay, so it kind of looks like a hamburger bun. I'll stand up here so you can see. And I even took my scissors and kind of pressed down with them. You could use, probably it'd be safer to use the chopsticks, but you do want them bent into these right angled pieces. Okay, you're going to do that on all four. Okay. Now, I'm not going to be able to test this because I do not have anything that's quite large enough for me to put the paddle boat into. All of my containers here are pretty small, and this jug is fairly large. So I would like you to send us video to Charlotte's 
Facebook page, or you can send me an email. My email is englertk at einetwork.net. So that's englert, E-N-G-L-E-R-T-K at einetwork.net. Okay, so once you get all of your rectangles folded hot dog style, if we folded hamburger style, it would be folded this way and you're not going to get as, an, as much push. So you want to make sure that you are folding it on the long edge so it looks more like a hamburger bun. All right, so I have those done. Now I'm going to take my duct tape. Pretty easy to rip, but I'm going to cut this into strips. To make it easier to put around my oh, problem with duct tape here. So it likes to stick to itself. Okay, I'm going to take this and I'm going to tape these together. So you're going to put them together. So it looks like that, and you're going to tape this top portion with the duct tape. Try to line them up as best you can and take the duct tape all the way around. Okay, so there's two of them taped together. Get another one. They're sticking. <laughs> okay, here's number two. And again, I like putting them down on the table so that they I make sure that they are stuck where they need to be. There you go. I have to put this back on the table here. Okay, and tape that all the way around again so that they're secure. Okay. And then we're going to take these two and we're going to tape them together. So this one's a little trickier because you don't have the table to secure it. So you just try your best to line them up. Okay, now I have one more to tape, so I need some more duct tape here. And I'm not going to cut it quite as long. I will use a couple pieces of the duct tape. Make it one long piece. Okay. I'm just taping them together like that, and then I'm taking this and lining that up. Okay. Line that up the best you can, and I'll show you what. It looks like from the side in just one second here. Okay, so you should have something that looks something like that. So it kind of looks like a cross from the side or an X, okay? So that is part of your paddle. This is what's going to make your boat go forward. All right, now you need your other bottle and we are going to attach the chopsticks to the sides of the bottle and you want about three quarters of the way down on the bottle 
doesn't have to be exact. Oops, lost my duct tape. And you're going to take some duct tape. And we're just going to attach one side. So I'll turn it this way. And tape our chopstick down. Okay. And then I'm going to take the other side. I like working with duct tape. It's sticky, but it's great stuff. Helps if I'm using the scissors in the correct manner. There we go. All right. So I'm going to kind of look down. And that's about... Nice thing is this bottle has ribs. So trying to center it and get it in about the same position as the other one. Okay. So we've got something that looks like this. But I want to make sure that stays in place. So I'm actually going to take my tape now and wrap it around one more time just to make sure those chopsticks do not move. What the heck? Moves all kinds of stuff. Okay. All right, so we've got that taped all the way around. What did I lose here? I lost, I lost oh, there they are. Uh, losing everything here. I lost my my paddle. Okay, so we've got our boat pretty much floated here. Now you're going to take your rubber band. Okay, and this goes around the the end of the. I want to try to make it even. Okay. Now, tricky part. You're going to take this and you have to get two of the paddles through the rubber band. Okay. Like that. So you can see there's an X inside the rubber band. And this is where you're going to wind it up. Now, the hard part on this right now is knowing which way you have to turn it. I'm turning it towards the back of the boat. And since I don't have any water to test this, do you think that's going to push the boat forward or is it going to go in reverse? So when you try this, you want to put your boat, your paddle wheeler in the middle of the pool or the middle of the um, whatever you're testing, your, the bathtub. That's probably a good place to test this. Too bad we don't have a bathtub. Okay. And you're going to let the paddle wheel go. And the more, what do you think? The more you twist it, is it going to go faster? Is it going to go longer? Okay. So you have to experiment with that. So, so you have to decide. You're going to test your paddle boat. See if winding the paddle forward makes it go forward. If you move the wind the paddle backwards is that going to make it go backward um does moving the rubber band closer to the boat make a difference should it be out here on the end should it be closer to the body of the boat um how many times can you wind up that rubber band to um make it move does you know how many paddle windings do you have to go to make it go the farthest and think about how you can improve because engineers are always looking at things and trying to figure out ways to improve their paddle boats. Um, do you need more weight in the paddle boat? Do you need a different shape for your paddle boat? So think of those things. But how does this work? Well, 
The boat moves by changing stored energy, which is called potential energy, into motion energy. That's the kinetic energy. And the more you wind the rubber band, or the more rubber bands you have, there's a hint, the more potential energy you have stored. So when you let go, this potential energy turns into kinetic energy and the boat moves. So be careful and watch out that your fingers don't get in the way. All right. So I hope you have a great time testing out your paddle boat and making improvements to it. So let me know. Remember, my email is E-N-G-L-E-R-T-K at E-I network dot net. OK, send me some videos of your or pictures of your paddle wheeler and how you made it yours. All right. You have a great day and we'll see you next time on Full Steam Ahead. You take care. Have a great week.